thank you for your invitation. Um, I will uh, make a, a few remarks regarding your uh, roadmap uh, presented a couple of days ago. Uh, first, uh, as the uh, uh, NV committee uh, chair, I very much welcome uh, that kind of uh, tool uh, because we need uh, sectorial roadmaps uh, in order to uh, move from the, uh, okay, we need to go to carbon neutrality on how are we going to get there? And you start answering the how, which is of course the key issues now we have on our joint table. Uh, that's precisely, and we like so much uh, the uh, that kind of tool, the uh, sectorial roadmaps for net zero, that we want, when I say we, is the European Parliament as a whole, uh, we want to have it as a mandatory tool in the climate law. And a, we need to make sure that all the sectors, at least the most concerned sector by uh, climate impact, do deliver on that kind of sectorial roadmaps. And we would like to have these sectorial roadmaps not only I would say industry driven, but as a uh, common good between the public authorities on one side and the private sector on the other side. Precisely to do what you said, Jan, meaning that we need to work together. Okay, we need to work together, but then we need to agree on where we want to get and how we are going to support your needs and what kind of commitments you can take in exchange. And we are, that's my profound uh, feeling, we are just at the beginning of it. Because you make the first step, and it's a good first step, but it's a first step. Now we need, for instance, to know, as policymakers, what are your investment needs associated to the various pathway you want to uh, embark uh, upon. Uh, and uh, the, the investment needs regarding uh, the technologies, for instance, like uh, hydrogen. We need also uh, to know more about the way you, uh, you and we uh, put your sectorial roadmap into a more uh, 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 larger, I would say, picture. If I take one, uh, another example, which is another key lever you want to raise, which is the uh, uh, sustainable fuel. Uh, it's about uh, a, a, a something that will be grown uh, in our fields. Uh, if I take the uh, 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 the sustainable fuel that will come from the agriculture or from the waste management, and of course we need to make sure that it makes sense uh, when you put that into. Uh, the uh, global picture of the common agricultural policy in the global picture of the uh, food uh, uh, security uh, picture and so on and so on. Precisely in order to avoid uh, actually the trap uh, we collectively fall in uh, with let's say a decade ago when we encourage a lot the car makers to go for uh, uh, agrocarbs, and at the end of the day, uh, they completely switched because it wasn't sustainable. So I acknowledge, and rightly so, that you made the point for not using first generation uh, sustainable fuel coming from uh, agrocarbons, but of course we need to put that into the global picture, because if you want to use sustainable uh, alternative fuels as a main driver for decarbonization, we need to make sure that this driver is sustainable as well. And you can't do that alone. You can't. So that's why we want to use the climate law to precisely create this tool to have a structured dialogue between public authorities and private sector to make sure that we have the joint roadmap. And as policymakers, then we take our responsibility to give you the needs for instance, through the uh, European Investment Bank or whatever, through the budget, uh, European budget and so on, to make sure that we have the right delivery model for you and you have the right commitments when it comes to climate neutrality. And we are not there yet. The, maybe that my last, my last comment, uh, and I guess you will have a questions as well on Corsia and so on and so on. 
that uh, we need to make sure that uh, you think as well as your companies, your industry, as a mobility provider. I mean, the way we manage to have a deal with the car industry is precisely to say, okay, we are going to speed up the techni technological shift through EVs, and we are going to put the right incentives in place. There are a lot of money coming from the recovery plants that will be used to boost the EVs uh, market share. And at the same time, we put the right standards in place to make it at scale. And at the same time, we discuss with the car makers on their strategy to uh, move from purely being car manufacturer to be service mobility service provider. Of course, you they will keep on producing goods, uh, greener goods, uh, but they will also uh, uh, provide services for mobility, which was not at the core of their business, uh, let's say, uh, 10 years ago, but that will grow as a market share and as a new business for them. So, uh, and, and this dimension is, unless I'm wrong, not in your roadmap. And I think it's a pity because, of course, it's part of your, to my view, it's part of the new business model for you in a decarbonized uh, world. So again, very good first step. We need this. We need a bit more clarity on your investment needs, on the material impact of the consequences of the technologies you are uh, relying on. And uh, we want to go deeper into the dialogue with you so that we can, at the end of the day, uh, get what we want to get, meaning the climate neutral world. Thanks a lot, Pascal, and I uh, do appreciate that we are agree that we do have to we have to do this together somehow. We have to find a way. One one of the issues is that when when airlines invest in aircraft and maybe aircraft with new technology, which is not there yet, uh, there is a lifetime of twenty years or more for for such an aircraft. So. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, what, what is your time schedule on this? Because we need to know pretty fast what kind of support we can get from uh, uh, the European uh, Parliament and, and from also, for, also, of course, from national uh, countries and so on. So uh, it, it is, um, otherwise it becomes a little bit foggy for, for many airlines to... Uh, exactly, exactly. So that's, you know, what you are saying is exactly the point I was highlighting. We need to have this agreement on, okay, you plan to invest on the next, next uh, investment cycle, X uh, billions for uh, hydrogen uh, 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 planes. Yeah. But then you're going to have uh, a lot of planes that we are going to, we, we would like to phase out of the market progressively. What kind of support do you need for that? Yeah. Where is, where, I don't know, where this, where this discussion is happening. And my gut feeling is that it's not happening anywhere. Precisely because we do not have this space for the structural dialogue to, to, for you to know what we could put and what we should put on the table and for us to know what you could put on the table. That's why, by the way, I very much welcome the fact that the European Roundtable, you know, the more than 50 uh, CEOs uh, uh, organization, I would say, including uh, Shell or Total or Nestle and so on, will uh, uh, are strongly supportive of this idea coming from the parliament to have mandatory uh, 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 net zero sectoral pathway and roadmaps co-design, co co I would say, both by public authorities and private authorities, so that I could, I could uh, answer your leg completely legitimate question. For instance, we could have phasing out uh, these uh, 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 schemes for the older uh, planes. We do not at that stage. Okay, we do not have it uh, precisely because we don't have a deal. Mm. So that's why the main risk for you is that we only work on the stick thing and we do not build the carrot thing. Uh, so okay. if we want to have the carrot and the stick at the same time, which is at the end of the day the only uh, uh, possibility we have, or, or the two of you, of us, yeah. is we need to have this deal. You provide us a good first basis, but then let's work together for the next step. 